Greetings from St Bride's Church, Fleet Street, here in the very heart of the City of London. We're delighted that you're tuning in to this podcast. St Bride's is one of the most famous and historic churches in London. Behind me, just over that wall, you can still see the remains of a Roman pavement dating back to around 180 AD. And there's been a church on this site since the 6th century. So it's a privilege for us to be keeping alive that tradition and the message of Christ's love for all here today. Do please leave a comment or a like and tell us where you're listening from. It's always a great pleasure to hear from you. And if you would like to donate to help support these online services, you'll find details in the accompanying text. And now may the light and peace of Christ be with us all as our worship begins. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. It is a great delight to welcome you to St Bride's to our choral Eucharist on this, the 13th Sunday after Trinity. Wherever you are in the world, and however you're listening to us, we hope that you will feel that you are very much part of the St Bride's family. We begin with our opening prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, 
and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people. He said, And now, O Israel, give heed to the statutes and the ordinances which I teach you, and do them, that you may live and go in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, gives you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us, whenever we call upon him? And what great nation is there that has statutes and ordinances so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Only take heed and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things which your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of James. Every good endowment and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Know this, my beloved brethren, let every man be quick to hear, 
slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not work the righteousness of God. Therefore put away all filthiness and the rank growth of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who observes his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But he who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer that forgets but a doer that acts, he shall be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his heart, this man's religion is vain. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When the Pharisees gathered together to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, observing the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they purify themselves, 
and there are many other traditions which they observe, the washing of cups and pots and vessels of bronze. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with hands defiled? And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honours me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. You leave the commandment of God, and hold fast the tradition of men. And he called the people to him again, and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand, there is nothing outside a man which by going into him can defile him, but the things which come out of a man are what defile him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Back in the days when I was lecturing at a theological college, I was delighted when one year I managed to persuade one of the foremost experts in pastoral ministry to come and lead a session for our students. It was considered a tremendous coup to have pulled this off as the man in question was a very big name and an acknowledged expert in his field. His books had become standard texts for those training for ordination. So we all found it difficult to believe what happened when he actually turned up. Because the session that he led for us was a complete disaster from beginning to end not because of what he had to say, which was sensible enough, but because of his behaviour and his attitude towards our students. He was arrogant and patronising and rude. What was particularly appalling was that he would respond to perfectly sensible questions that he was being asked by individuals by belittling or undermining the questioner, or implying that only an idiot would ask anything quite so stupid. By the end of that session, the entire group of students were completely as one in their hostility towards him. I had seldom seen them quite so united about anything. And one of their number summed up the situation perfectly when she said afterwards, that man may know everything that there is to know about the theory of pastoral care, but if ever I were in actual need of pastoral support, he is the last person on earth that I would go to. But for me, the most astonishing thing of all was that it became abundantly clear that this supposed expert in pastoral care of all things clearly had no idea that there was a problem. He was completely unaware of the immense gulf that existed between what he said and who he was, or to put it another way, between what he preached and what he practised. At around the same time, I attended a conference at which a senior academic, who was notorious, indeed legendary for his unsurpassed arrogance, delivered a lecture entirely devoted to extolling the virtue of humility. Humility. By the end of the session, I was not the only person present who was having to crank up my jaw from the floor. And once again, it was abundantly clear 
that the speaker had absolutely no idea that there was a problem. Indeed, he would doubtless have regarded it as being of little importance or interest, even if he were. He wasn't remotely concerned about what anyone else thought, basically because he regarded everyone else present as beneath him. So much for the virtue of humility. In our Gospel reading this morning, Jesus has some very sharp things to say about those in authority who presume that they have the right to condemn others for their actions while failing to see the massive gulf between what they themselves say and who they are, between what is going on on the outside and the inside. In the specific case we are shown, it is the scribes and the Pharisees who are his principal target. They are busy condemning the disciples for eating without observing the Jewish regulations about hand washing, without at the same time paying any heed whatsoever to their own impurity of heart. And Jesus is perfectly clear which of the two is the more serious offence in the eyes of God. Because for Jesus, unless there is a fundamental coherence between what we do on the outside and who we are on the inside, then our pious words and our worthy actions are meaningless and valueless. So how much worse it is if we are not only in that position, but we also presume to set others straight on how they should act, because then we really are in deep mire. This is a theme that crops up again and again in the teachings of Jesus, as when, for example, he condemns those who complain about the speck in their brother's eye whilst ignoring the plank in their own. And a similar theme crops up in our reading from James this morning, where the author says this. Be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. And that, of course, was the problem with the two individuals I describe in my two opening stories. It would seem that however exalted their status and however exalted their publications, neither of them had ever spent sufficient time looking into their own hearts or at their own lives to recognise the truth about who they were. When they looked into the metaphorical mirror, all they could see was the surface reflection, which was what they mistakenly imagined others would see too. But the gulf between what they presented on the outside and who they were on the inside was so stark that in fact it undermined their entire credibility. None of those who actually encountered them was fooled for a moment. I'm sure that it is true for most of us that to some extent or another there is a gulf between who we are and who we like to think we are. And it is also likely that people will recognise that gulf, however much we like to conceal it, even from ourselves. I was reflecting the other day that the people who impress me most in life are not those who are the most clever or sophisticated or successful or pious. Rather, it is the people in whom there is no guile people whose outside matches their inside, those who are able to say what they mean and to mean what they say. Because they lack the desire or the ability to try and impress others, they have no need to persuade themselves that they are other than they are. And more often than not, these are also the individuals who, in my experience, exhibit all those positive qualities that are described in our reading from James. They are quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. 
They are people who somehow manage to be reconciled to themselves, reconciled to others, and reconciled to God. They know that they have nothing to lose and nothing to prove. So how very interesting it is that the theme of reconciliation also lies at the heart of today's collect, our special prayer for the day. For me, the language of reconciliation means rather more than simply the repairing of what was previously broken or damaged, because there is also something profoundly healing about it. Reconciliation brings with it not simply satisfactory closure, but much more importantly, a significant new beginning. So it is that when our collect, our collect speaks of God in Christ reconciling the world to himself, it is speaking not merely of an end result, but of the launch pad for something completely new, proclaiming the good news of God's love so that all who hear it may be drawn to you. Lives can be made whole again. Our inner lives and our outer lives can be drawn together. Our relationships can be repaired and reinvigorated. And the kingdom of God brought that little bit closer as a result. But that miraculous process can only truly begin in one place, which is within our individual human hearts. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Christ. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. At the end of each prayer, I will say, Lord, for the years, would you please respond? We give you thanks. So, Lord, for the years. Lord of the morning, we thank you for our Church of St Bride, for those who have restored it and worshipped here throughout the ages, and where now we come together and ask you to hear the prayers we offer. May the gift of your holy word be a lantern at our feet, a light to our paths, 
and a strength to our lives. We ask your blessing on Her Majesty the Queen. We give thanks for her dedication to this country and the Commonwealth, yesterday, today and in the years to come. We pray for Alison, our Rector, for Jeff, our Associate Priest and for all who have made it possible for us to join in this and other acts of worship during the last difficult months. And for our family and friends, watch over those who we do not often see and keep them safe. Lord, for the years, we give you thanks. Our thoughts turn to the victims and their families who are suffering as a result of recent devastating natural disasters and the continuing war in Afghanistan. Comfort those who are grieving, homeless and afraid, and give them courage as they attempt to rebuild the broken threads of their lives. God of the nations, we pray for peace throughout our fractured world where life is precarious, for all men and women serving in our armed services, and for those working in local and national media, especially those who risk their lives in lands far away. Lord, for the years, we give you thanks. God of compassion, we bring to your care all who are unhappy and experiencing difficult times, and generally finding life difficult to cope with on their own, Give them comfort and hope when all seems lost. Show us how to help them where we can. Healing God, we pray for all who are unwell and suffering. May they find you with them and draw hope and courage from your presence. God of the spirits, we remember those we have loved, who once shared in our laughter and our tears, and are now at peace in your eternal kingdom. May we who miss them be comforted by the memories that we cherish in our hearts. In a moment of quietness, we bring before you all who are known personally to us, who are in special need, and for all who have no one to pray for them. Lord, for the years, we give you thanks. Lord of seed time and harvest, hear our prayers for farmers and those whose work helps to maintain the countryside and the protection of wildlife. As the sunshine pushes shadows aside, revealing the beauty of your creation rolled into a sphere, through colour, shape and birdsong, the whispering wind, the splendour of fields of golden corn, help us to understand the responsibility we have to keep this treasure, your earth, safe from harm. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you please stand? Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of his kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
Let us pray. God, our Creator, you feed your children with the true manna, the living bread from heaven. Let this holy food sustain us through our earthly pilgrimage until we come to that place where hunger and thirst are no more. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.